now available in paperback at e mirrors Isis, Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Dark Incubus in paperback in e-readers today. There was a firestorm of controversy when disgraced media mogul Harvey Weinstein's conviction for a sex crime was overturned by New York's highest court. Action pouring in this morning following a bombshell decision from the New York State Court of Appeals. It overturned disgrace movie hook producer Harvey Weinstein's 2020 conviction on rape charges. Some are warning the decision will have dire consequences for victims of sexual abuse. CBS News' Elijah Westbrook joins us now with more on this. Elijah. Well, Mary and Chris, this is coming as shocking news. This morning, we're hearing from both Weinstein's accusers and his attorneys about the recent decision. And we've learned the New York State Court of Appeals found that the judge who presided over Weinstein's case made a mistake by allowing prosecutors to call witnesses whose accusations were not part of the charges against him. This is now resulting in Weinstein getting a new trial. It will 100% have a chilling effect on victims coming forward. Former TV reporter Lauren Savon reacting to the surprising news that Harvey Weinstein's rape case is being overturned. Savon says Weinstein forced himself on her, and when she refused further advances, she says he made her stand there while he conducted inappropriate sexual acts on himself. It's a traumatic experience for anyone. I, you know, the women who did so are so brave and went through so much, and the idea that they might have to do this all over again is horrific. She's one of more than 100 women who've now accused the former movie executive of either sexual harassment or assault. She was among many who testified in his 2020 rape trial. On Thursday, in a 4-3 to three ruling, the state's court of appeals said Judge James Burke should have never allowed testimony from people who were not technically part of the case. The news is coming as a shock to actress Ashley Judd, who was one of Weinstein's first accusers. This today is an act of institutional institutional betrayal and our institutions betray survivors of male sexual violence. Her reaction comes as we're hearing from Weinstein's attorney, Arthur Adala, who says Weinstein maintains his innocence, adding that you can't throw out years of legal precedent because someone is unpopular. Today's legal ruling is a great day for America because it, it instills in us the faith that there is a justice system. Now, to be clear here, Weinstein is not a free man. You may remember he was also convicted of rape in California, where he's currently serving a 16-year sentence. This morning, the district attorney says they're confident that their case will survive an appeal. Mary? Elijah Westbrook, Elijah, thank you. And you can find our past reporting on this case and continuing coverage on our website, cbsnewyork.com. Now, according to reports, the New York State Court of Appeals overturned the 2020 conviction of Harvey Weinstein on rape charges because they said that the judge made an error by allowing women to testify in Harvey Weinstein's rape case that had absolutely nothing to do with the initial victim that Harvey Weinstein was tried for sexually violating. And as a result of this judge making this error, Harvey Weinstein's rape conviction has been overturned and many women, especially feminists and women who were a part of the Me Too movement, are extremely upset and many of them are upset and saying that this basically is going to make it harder for women out here because Harvey Weinstein's conviction was overturned. Now, many of these women are basically reacting based on their feelings. However, when it comes to our courts, our courts are supposed to meet the standard of rule of law, not supposed to be a place where people just act on their feelings. And that is the core reason why Harvey Weinstein's conviction is being overturned. While many people have their feelings about Harvey Weinstein as related to him being a slimy individual, he is an American citizen, and as an American citizen, he has rights under the United States Constitution. 
And under the United States Constitution, Harvey Weinstein, in this case, was not allowed to get a fair trial because the due process of law was undermined by a group of individuals who were basically trying his case in the court of a public opinion. Moreover, they were trying his case on feelings similar to the way that a prosecutor in Pennsylvania, Kevin Steele, was trying the case of Bill Cosby on the court of public opinion based on women's feelings as related to alleged sex crimes. However, our country is not based on the feelings of women. No, our country is a country of laws. And in that country of laws, men are innocent until they are proven guilty. And sadly, Harvey Weinstein was not proven guilty, even though he was a slime ball for many years again sexually harassing and allegedly possibly sexually assaulting and possibly graping women the whole problem with the trial of harvey weinstein is it wasn't done as related to rule of law based on evidence and based on fact and that's why this conviction is being overturned and again it's being overturned because prosecutors acted on the feelings of women and looked to sate the feelings of women but did not understand that when you try a case in the United States under the Constitution, under the Constitution, we have to try cases under rule of law because rule of law is how you prove a person guilty of a crime. And that wasn't done in this case by a judge who allowed people to, who had no, no connection to the victim to testify in that case. And as those people made emotional statements to the court, they really didn't have any connection to the, the, the victim. And again, that really is, was the real reason why this whole conviction was overturned. Because when you go to trial, you are supposed to make a case about a victim. And the whole case is supposed to focus only on that victim. That is the only person you're supposed to focus on as related to that case and that's where the entire case against Harvey Weinstein fell apart because the judge got in their feelings and when the judge got in their feelings and allowed these other women to testify that basically wound up creating a judicial error a judicial error that may possibly allow a sexual predator to wind up going free and I mean to say alleged sexual predator because we don't really know about Harvey Weinstein unless it can be substantiated in a criminal court and yes Harvey Weinstein was convicted in California and would have to go from New York to California to possibly serve that sentence if he is if he if this conviction gets overturned and that may be a possibility however in that case he may possibly wind up winning his appeal again because again overzealous prosecutors basically try these cases in the court of opinion first one and two they wind up trying these cases without ever looking at these cases critically like in the case of bill cosby because in the case of bill cosby there kevin Steele overzealously ran his campaign to say that he was going to convict bill cosby and that showed one bias which is one judicial error and two he then used the whole affidavit that another prosecutor told him that they would not use again violating bill cosby's rights and when it comes to harvey weinstein even though I don't like this man, and he's basically a scumbag, the whole thing is he has rights under our Constitution. And if you want to try somebody in our courts, you have to follow rule of law. And that's what many feminists and women who are a part of the Me Too movement just don't understand. Now, when it comes to the women who are feminists, who are a part of the Me Too movement, many of these women want us to trust and believe them, and they want to make trust and believe the standard of law in the land, but that standard of trust and belief is a dangerous standard, and it's a dangerous standard that takes us back to the dark days of Jim Crow, because during the dark days of Jim Crow, white women use the standard of trust and believe to go out and lynch black men 
and have black men put in jail on a series of charges like grapes and, and assaults and use the standard of trust and believe to rile up the emotions of beta male white men to form lynch mobs and that really goes against our United States Constitution and that's why we have to get away from the standard of trust and believe that led to the convictions of Bill Cosby and Jonathan Majors and get back to a standard of rule of law because the standard of rule of law means that a man is innocent until proven guilty and a person can have a day in court, a day in court where they are tried by a jury of their peers. And as they are tried in that court by a jury of their peers, the case is based on the evidence that's presented as related to modern technology right now like DNA and grape kits and other things not just the word of a woman because a person can go out here and say anything but the whole thing is by going to court that day in court is meant to substantiate these facts that's what it means as related to our rule of law and what we have with many of these feminists and women who are part of the me too movement is they want to take us away from rule of law and they want to take us from rule of law for a series of disingenuous reasons. Now, these women say they want to stop grapes and sexual assaults. However, what they really want to do is use that as a cover, and they want to use that as a cover to be able to go out and look to get a payday as related to these allegations, because a lot of times with these women, they want to make allegations primarily because they want they see that they've aged out of the entertainment industry and as they have aged out of the entertainment industry what has happened with a lot of these women is a lot of these women they they know that they don't have many options because they've basically wasted their prime years on the casting couch trading sexual trans favors for roles but now that they've gotten older what's happened is many of these women are not capable of being able to trade sexual favors for roles and what's happened to a lot of these women is they're winding up being um out here and having to deal with new competition from a new generation of younger women and that's basically what led to the Me Too movement wanting to push this whole narrative of trust and believe. And as they look to push this narrative of trust and believe, what happened is they want to change the court so that they can go out here and make any sort of allegation without any sort of accountability. Many of these women don't want to take any sort of accountability as related to their actions. And what they want to do is revise history to make themselves out to be the victims of alleged things. And the whole thing is they, want, they don't want to go to a criminal court with rule of law. No, they want the courts to play to emotion. But that's not how our courts work because our courts are designed to deal with with factual evidence and factual evidence of crimes that took place within a statute of limitations. That's the way our court system works. But many of these older women who have aged out of the entertainment industry, what they want to do is be able to just make a story and get an allegation made against a man. And that allegation really is one that where they can go out here just based on their word and get a man to lose his pers personal reputation, his professional reputation, and even his freedom. And that is goes far beyond rule of law. And that in some, as we, when we look at the facts of the Court of Appeals, this is an abuse of law. And it's an abuse of law that was corrected. And even though I have my issues with Harvey Weinstein, I, when I look at the law here, it's all about making sure that everybody has a fair right to a trial and, again, a fair right to have their day in court. And that's what Harvey Weinstein was denied because many of these women act 
acted on their feelings and the judge acted on their feelings in an effort to sate the feelings of women but our courts do not work on feelings no our courts work on facts and even though people have their issues about Harvey Weinstein sadly this whole case happened as a result of the judge again allowing testimony that did not really fit this case again you cannot go out here and bring witnesses that were not a victim of this case as related to this perpetrator you can't bring those individuals in because that basically is like stacking the deck against that individual and stacking the deck to try to get a conviction without ever trying the actual evidence of the case because when somebody is on trial, you want to try the actual evidence of the case, and you want the evidence of the case as related to that person to only be the thing tried, because if we're charging somebody with an allegation as related to an action, we have to try what happened to that individual, not try the other cases of these other women, because that's what they were doing by stacking all of this testimony in. They were basically trying to try Harvey Weinstein on charges as related to a crime he, that he possibly did not commit. And those were charges that needed to be filed by the DA as related to those assaults in separate trials. And that is the judicial error that basically led to the um, overturning of Harvey Weinstein's conviction. Now, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg is saying that he's going to try this case again. But I don't know if this case would be a, one that he would possibly be able to win based on what I have heard about the evidence as related to this possible case. Now, there is one case where they say that Harvey Weinstein participated in oral sex on one of these alleged victims. And I don't know if that case would possibly be one that he could win because at that case, Again, this is a case where the woman could have easily fought back as related to this situation, possibly. But the whole thing is, R.V. Weinstein is a very garbage individual. But I don't understand. But the whole thing is that prosecutors like Alvin Bragg, as I see it, don't really know how to approach this this case as related to Harvey Weinstein. And that's why this case basically wound up getting overturned as related to the first trial in 2020. And Mr. Superboy brilliantly called this out about four years ago. He said this was going to be the outcome as related to this case. And I have to wonder if this was an outcome that was possibly planned with the system of white supremacy, because the system of white supremacy does play chess, while those who are emotional play Candyland. And it possibly was something that they saw way back as related to this case. I mean, anybody who does critical thinking could see the outcome of this case. And this basically makes the Me Too movement over to as related to getting convictions because the conviction against Bill Cosby was overturned. This Harvey Weinstein conviction is overturned. And it just shows that our system is, again, based on rule of law. And many of these feminists, they want to say that they are being put in danger by this ruling. But the whole thing is this ruling doesn't really, I don't believe, put it to anyone in danger. Because when it comes to our Constitution, what was put in jeopardy was, ironically, by these women who wanted to go out here and take us from the standard of rule of law to trust and believe. And as they looked to take us to the standard of trust and believe, they were putting the nation in a dangerous place that it had been in in the dark days of Jim Crow. Because in the dark days of Jim Crow, what they wanted to do was make it where it was just the word of a white person, again, a white supremacist who could just have their word and say a black person did something. And that's where these white feminists and these women in the Me Too movement wanted to take us to until the entire scheme wound up falling completely apart as related to the white supremacist paymasters. Now, the original white supremacist plan was to go after heterosexual black men like Bill Cosby and demonize heterosexual black men as black brutes. However, as after Gretchen Carlson wound up getting a $20 million settlement from Roger Ailes, that's when the hypergamy of these white women who had basically aged out of the entertainment industry and many other industries wanted 
kicked in and these women basically wanted to get a big payday and the way they wanted to get the big payday was by going out here and making allegations against white men and as these allegations against white men came out that's when the me too movement broke bad and it broke bad because they started going after white men and with white men having more resources and more money the the proportional amount of white men getting charges and doing perp walks as mr superboy has talked about that number wound up rising and that's when the me too movement just completely backfired on white supremacy and as that happened we started to see lots of white men like harvey weinstein now i know some people say he's of a certain religion but he is a white man who's benefited from white privilege for many years and those white men started becoming the face of sexual predation and that's where the me too movement completely backfired and it started to even further backfire when people like um senator christian gillibrand allegedly went on a campaign to remove the senator um i i, I just can't remember his name and when they started to grab political power that's when the me too movement just went too far and that's when the Me Too movement started to just fall apart because, again, the people who created the Me Too movement and supported it were white men. And when white men saw that they were becoming the face of pred sexual predation, when they saw that they were becoming the face of sexual violence, when they saw that white women were breaking bad on them, that's when they had to break up the Me Too movement. And many women are saying, oh, this is going, this is going to make things worse. But no, the, we have a nation of law. We have a nation with a constitution. And again, we're just going back to the standard of rule of law. And when it comes to the standard of rule of law, you have to go and be able to prove your case in court. You cannot go on your feelings. You cannot go on allegations because allegations are not something that can be substantiated in a court of law again you saying something happened should not be the barometer for a man losing his personal reputation his professional reputation and even his freedom no in order to go and make charges against any man no matter how slimy he is like harvey weinstein there is a rule and standard of law and under that standard of law a woman has to go to a court with a police report with a dna or a grape kit and evidence to substantiate a crime that is the standard of rule of law and that standard is the one that's trying to that they're trying to reestablish because many white men are dealing with the impact of the me too movement they thought this was just going to affect black men like bill cosby as they tried to push and project a black brute narrative on black men however what's happened is many white men are being affected by this standard of trust and believe and they are reaping what they sowed later than what they sowed greater than what they sowed i mean this is this this is many of these grandsons and great grandsons of white men who basically were the ones who pushed this narrative on to black people and now that they have to take a taste of their own medicine what they're doing is looking to try to get back to the standard of rule of law because when it comes to white men white men basically were forced to change the way they dealt with women since about 2016 when this me too movement started and as a result many of those men are putting their distance between themselves and women putting distance between themselves to the point where the dating market has basically collapsed in america and the west putting distance between themselves at the job because they any interaction with a woman based on an allegation can cost them their job and their per personal and professional reputation and their freedom and as a result this is ha this has devastating economic damage to the west so that's why we're starting to see these convictions be overturned as related to men like harvey weinstein and bill cosby and i have to wonder if jonathan majors would get 
and his conviction overturned because the environment for male-female relations is extremely hostile at this point, and it's so hostile at this point that no man can feel safe about even having any sort of contact with a woman, and that's the sad state that we are in due to the, the, the standard of trust and believe, and because women want us to trust and believe them, no man trusts any woman or believes anything that they say, and they don't trust them to be even around them anymore. And again, while many people don't like Harvey Weinstein, I just don't like this standard of trust and belief being the law of the land. And again, the standard of trust and belief needs to go because the standard of trust and belief is rooted in white supremacy. The standard of trust and belief is rooted in racism because the original plan was to go after black men with this campaign. But now that white men have to deal with this standard, that's why they want to get rid of this standard. And again, Harvey Weinstein, slimy guy, he's just a piece of garbage. But again, under our stand, under our constitution, even a piece of garbage has rights. And we just cannot go out here and arbitrarily put people in jail because of your feelings. No, you have to have evidence. And that's what this whole overturning of Harvey Weinstein's conviction is all about. It's all about going and putting the standard of rule of law back in place because if women go out here and they get involved with things like the casting couch and go out here and make dirty deals where they don't have clean hands, they cannot go to the um, police and say that a crime happened. No, if a crime happened, you have to do this within the statute of limitations and go and get the proper evidence to show that a crime has happened. That's how you get recourse for things. No, it's not like the Me Too movement, which wants to revise history and make themselves out to be victims. I mean, what, when it comes to this whole thing, when it comes to rule of law, you cannot use the courts to go out here and try to use it to get a payday based on something you said happened 20, 25, or 30 years ago. If a crime happened as related to what our founding fathers established, you have to go to that court almost immediately to get justice because under a system of justice, you want to get this individual off the street and you might say, oh, this person has all this power and clout. But if, again, if this person is a danger to people in society, you want to see that person taken off the streets almost immediately. And that's why women don't make the claims years later. They make it immediately because that really shows that something really happened. But nobody wants to talk about all of this as related to the Me Too movement and how they don't want to take accountability for anything. No, they, they're all talking about how bad it is because they're in their feelings about Harvey Weinstein. But if they had approached Harvey Weinstein when he was younger and committing these crimes, this predator would be in jail right now. And they would be in jail because women who were out here would be genuine about taking this predator off the streets instead of trying to revise history to avoid taking accountability for their actions. Because if you, women are genuine, again, Harvey Weinstein may be a slime ball and he is a piece of garbage, but the whole thing is the way you deal with a piece of garbage like this is to one, not have any involvement with him, two, not get on his casting couch and create a covert contract with that man, and three, if he does commit some crime, you wind up putting that man in jail. That's what you do to keep a piece of garbage like this out of circulation in society, and that's what wasn't done here, and that's sadly why this man's conviction is being overturned, and sadly being overturned because people wanted to go out here and wanted to act on their feelings instead of establishing a standard for rule of law, which would create a legal precedent that would set a legal boundary for men who participate in predatory behavior like this, because when it comes to predators like this, you want to set a legal standard for that person to set some boundary that lets everybody know where the line is as related to their behavior. That's what you want in the terms of a guy like a Harvey Weinstein, and that's where the Me Too movement failed as related to this whole case of Harvey Weinstein that lets this man out of jail because they did, went out here acting on their feelings instead of acting on the facts as related to rule of law. 
Now, if you want to pick up some of my books on the SJS Direct Imprint, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you'd like to see me make more videos about men's issues, you can drop a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Amari's Revenge. The Goddess Next Door is confronted by a newbie and queen out for revenge at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in this inaugural Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Amari's Revenge in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.